Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about arterial blood gases and how you can figure out whether someone's in metabolic acidosis, respiratory acidosis, all of that very quickly in this video. Let's get started. If you want to gain more information about nursing or to improve your nursing skills in general, please consider subscribing down below. I upload a video every single week and you don't want to miss them. All right, so let's get right into it. Let's talk about ABGs. Honestly, when I was in nursing school, this was very complicated for me. I couldn't really get it, but I figured out an algorithm that will tell you what state they're in and whether they're compensating or not. It works every single time and then also at the end near the end of the video I'll show you example questions that I'm gonna be doing on my computer so the first thing you got to do is write down these normal values right here you just have to memorize them and I'll show you what each of them mean more specifically right here all right so let's get right into it whenever you're interpreting arterial blood gases you always want to consider what the patient's situation is and what underlying conditions they have arterial blood gases are an objective finding of a person's situation for example if a person has if a patient has copd they're more most likely going to be in respiratory acidosis so if you see a person with copd and they have shortness of breath you're going to think respiratory acidosis but you always want to use these objective findings which are the arterial blood gases to confirm that you never want to look at someone's abgs and automatically interpret um, that the person's in respiratory acidosis you always want to have an idea of treating the patient first and then finding objective object uh, then taking a look at the objective findings and providing evidence for your way of thinking. Okay, with that being said, let's get right into it. So the first thing you wanna do is write down these normal values, the pH, the pH 7.35 to 7.45. Anything less than 7.35 is gonna be acidotic. Anything greater than 7.45 is gonna be alkalotic. Anything, uh, if a patient has a PaCO2 that's greater than 45, the person's acidotic. The person's PaCO2 is acidotic. If a person has a PaCO2 that is less than 35, then the person's PaCO2 is alkalotic. The next thing you're going to take a look at is the HCO3. If the person's HCO3 is less than 22, then the person is in an acidotic state. If the person's HCO3 is greater than 26, then the, this finding suggests alkalosis. So let's get right into the steps. The first step is to take a look at the pH. If the P, like we said, if the pH is less than 7.35, right, then the person is in acidosis. But if the patient is has a pH that is greater than 7.45, then they're going to be in alkalosis. However, the pH um, can be normal in an arterial blood gas, right? It's a number. So if a person has a normal um, pH of 7.4, then the, that's like the absolute, um, that's the absolute medium in between. The pH is not going to be a significant finding in that case. However, if the pH is less than 7.4, right, or greater than 7.4, the same principle applies. If the pH is less than 7.4, then that means the person's in acid in regular acidosis. But it is still acidosis because you're going to get questions that you know, are gonna have a pH that is normal. And as we're gonna find out, this the, identifying what state the patient's in is very important. So if the person has a, a pH that's greater than 7.4, that means this person is in alkalosis. Even though the pH is within normal range, the person, you still need to identify that if it's greater than 7.4 or less than 7.4, what the person's in. The second thing to do is to look at the PaCO2. You want to know if the PaCO2 is greater than 45 
or if it's less than 35. As we said, greater than 45 is acidosis, less than 35 is alkalosis. Next thing you wanna do is take a look at the bicarbonate. Um, you want to do is take a look at the bicarbonate. So that's step number three. Once you take a look at the bicarbonate, you need to identify if the person is in alkalosis or acidosis. So a HCO3, right, that's greater than 26 suggests that the person is in alkalosis. If it's less than 22, then it is acidosis fourth thing you want to do once you have all those values you have to match the pH to the PaCO2 or the HCO3 well what do I mean by that well what I mean is that you need to use the first three steps and use those values you found in the step number four to give you a better explanation let's give you an example of certain values that you can get so let's say you get a pH of 7.28 you get a PaCO2 of 50, right? And you get a, a bicarb of 25. The pH, the pH is less than 7.35, which is acid. You get a PaCO2 greater than 45, which is acid. And you get a bicarb that is normal. Because the pH and the PaCO2 match, you know that this person, right, is in a respiratory state respiratory state. Um, let's say that you get a pH of 7.5, a PaCO2 of let's say 38, and you get a bicarb of 30. So the pH is greater than 7.45, so it's basic. The PaCO2 is 35, the normal range is 35 to 45, and this is 38, so it's normal. Then you look at the bicarb, and it's greater than 26, so it's basic. Once the pH and the bicarb match, these two match, then the person's in metabolic state. Metabolic. So essentially, if the pH is acidic, if it's acid, right, you gotta match it or basic you got to see if the PaCO2, right, or the bicarb match the pH. If they do, you can identify if it's respiratory or metabolic. This will become more clear when I do questions at the end of this video. Next, we're going to move on to compensation. So if you want to know that the pH, if you want to know if the person's compensating, you got to first take a look at, this is step number five, by the way, you got to first take a look at the pH. If it is within 7.35 or 7.45, then the patient is fully compensating. However, if the pH is not normal, you, you can have partial compensation. So in order to do this, you need to apply the fourth step of these of these principles into the fifth step to see if they're compensating or not. So let's just say you get a pH, right, that is acid. You get a PaCO2 that is also acid, but you get a, a bicarb, right, that's greater than 26, which makes it basic. If the bicarb is greater than 26, right? If it is greater than 26, it doesn't match the pH, right? But it's going greater than 26, which means that it's basic, right? Then you know that this person is partially compensating. Let's, another example is let's say the pH is basic, the PaCO2 is acid and the bicarb right is basic right this these set of parameters tells you that the person's partially compensating because 
the PaCO2 is not normal. It's greater than 45, which makes it base, which makes it acid, acidotic. If you have a parameter, if you have these parameters where you have the pH matching the HCO3 and the PaCO2 is going greater the opposite direction, then you know that the person is partially compensating. However, if the person had, let's just say this person had a normal PaCO2, then this person is not going to be partially compensating. It's not going to be compensating at all. So, again, seven. let's say you have a pH of 7.3, acidosis, 48, acidosis, HCO3, alkalosis, that means this person is partial compensation. If the let if the HCO3 let's say was 24, then this person has a normal range of HCO3, which is 22, 26. Then this person is not compensating at all. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It helps other people reach the video, and also be sure to share it with your nursing friends or any nursing colleagues you may have. So let's just go ahead and start. Um, doing some practice questions so we can apply all of these principles and maybe you can get a better understanding of how to apply the these principles. So let's go ahead and do some practice questions. The website I use to do these questions is abg.ninja slash abg. You can click the description box down below and I'll have a link to it so you can practice doing questions and applying all these principles I have taught you. I highly recommend you do at least 20 questions for you to really consolidate your learning and to apply these principles. So let's go go ahead and analyze some ABGs. So the first thing you want to do is take a look at the pH. The pH is greater than 7.45 so we know that this is basic. The PaCO2 right, is greater than 45 which means that it is acidotic. The bicarb is greater than 26, so we know that this person is basic. So let's go ahead and answer the question now. Since we know the pH is greater than 7.45, we're gonna go ahead and click alkalosis. Since the pH is basic above greater than 7.45 and the bicarb is greater than 26, the pH and the bicarb match, so we know that this person is in a metabolic state. If we want to know that the person's compensating, we take a look at the PaCO2, right? And since the PaCO2 is in an acidotic state, right, it's greater than 45, we know that this per person is partially compensating. And then you can take it a step further and identify what is it compensating by. Well, since the PaCO2 is greater than 45, we know that the, they're compensating by using respiratory acidosis. Let's go ahead and check if we're right. And look at that, we are right. We're metabolic acidosis partially compensated by respiratory acidosis. Let's try another one. Okay, 7.35 to 7.45 normal pH. This is 7.26, this is acidosis, PaCO2 is uh, normal, it's, within, it's between 35 to 45, and the bicarb is less than 22. So that means the pH and the bicarb match. Since the pH and bicarb match, we know that this person is in, first of all, is in an acidosis state, we know that this person is in a metabolic state because the bicarb and the pH match. Then we're going to take a look at the PaCO2, the, op the one that didn't match, and see if the person's compensating. Well, the PaCO2 is within 35 to 45, so we know that this person is not compensated at all. It is an uncompensated metabolic acidosis state. Let's see if we're right. Boom, we're right. Let's go ahead and do one more question. Okay, 7.22 acid, PaCO2 normal, HCO3 acid. So pH acidosis, 
pH matches the bicarb, metabolic, 35 to 45, no compensation. Let's see if we're right, we're right. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below. I do have new videos every single week and we'll catch you in the next video, guys. Talk to you later. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Please be sure to follow me on my Instagram. It's way up there. And also make sure you check out the description box down below where I have links to my free eBooks, my fitness guide, my nutrition guide, and I also have a 45 day NCLEX plan where I teach everyone how I pass the NCLEX and how you can pass it too. So you definitely wanna check out the links in the description box and be sure to check out my other videos. I have playlists on my channel and thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.